Kaya ako nag, nagsasaliksik, kahit po ako walang pinag-aralan, pati Grego pinapakialaman ko, pati Ebraiko pinapakialaman ko, humahanap ako ng mga diksyonaryo para maintindihan ko. Kasi yun nga ang nakasulat sa Grego. Bakit pag itinranslate sa ibang wika, pinapalitan? Some say, just read the Bible and you will already understand the meaning of the verses. Is it just as easy and as simple as that? Remember, the Bible was originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. It was not written in Tagalog and English. So we need critical analysis to fully understand the text of the Bible. Greek words, nouns, verbs, adjectives, participles, have a more elaborate morphology and consequently more roles about, about what forms can be used in what context with what meanings. English speakers have difficulty with the Greek case system. Also, the Hebrew verbal system is challenging, emphasizing aspect over tense. Syntax and grammar are important as well as attention to the literary context of a passage, the way authors express themselves using figures of speech and other rhetorical devices is also important. The challenge for the exegete and translator of the Hebrew Bible is to understand and communicate ideas from ancient literatures and cultures that are often vastly different than their own. And to bridge this gap, interpreters must understand Hebrew grammar. That is, the shared linguistic standards of the ancient communities. Now, we will cite several examples why we need to study the original text. First, Job chapter 42 verse 6 is notoriously difficult. People who know Hebrew can agree on what it means and how to translate it. In one textbook, I read, What does Job despise or reject? Himself? His words? Or God? Now let us read the Hebrew text of Job chapter 42, verse 6. Alken im as venehamte al afar va ever. The reflexive idea, I despise myself, comes from the nipple stem of the verb naham means to repent. Wolke O'Connor's grammar of Biblical Hebrew shows nipal stem sometimes indicates a reflexive idea. Nipal is the name given to one of the seven major verb stems in Biblical Hebrew. The nipal stem is used to express simple action with either a passive or a reflexive voice. Second, John chapter 10 verse 30 has a long history of interpretation and was cited on both sides of the Trinitarian and Christological controversies of the 4th to 5th century. The grammatical gender of hen could be interpreted in various ways. What the defenders of the position formulated at Nicaea particularly liked to point out was the, the fact that the verb are is plural while the predicate one is singular. The word one in this verse is interpreted by some people that Jesus is also the Father. Now let us read the Greek text of John chapter 10 verse 13. Ego kai ho pater hen esmen. In Greek, these three, heis, mia, and hen, all mean one. According to a respected and famous New Testament scholar, Donald Arthur Carson, the word for one is the neuter hen, not the masculine highs. Jesus and his father are not one person, as the masculine would suggest. So, if the masculine highs is used, those who believe that Jesus is also the father are correct. But since the neuter hen was used 
It means the persons of the father and the son are different. 